stop along the famed migration of butterflies has now been hailed as Monarch City. Lamar, Colorado got that honor this spring, and this right here is why hundreds of the creatures flew through John Martin Reservoir State Park, and this is just part of their 3,000-mile journey to Mexico. Fantastic. It happens all the time. Aww. So now as the weather is shifting into fall, millions of these brightly colored monarch butterflies will make that long journey south to their winter home. And as they do, it will be an opportunity for many of you to take in that amazing sight. But it will depend on a few weather factors. Joining us now is butterfly expert Rick McCullough. Thank you so much, Rick, for joining us. So talk to us about the difference between monarchs and, of course, other butterflies we may see moving around this time of the year. Well, with the monarch butterfly, naturally, they're on their way to Mexico. And the other butterflies are setting in for the winter, either as chrysalises, some might overwinter as eggs, or even caterpillars. But the monarch is starting it, well, it's well into its migration. And one of the best places to see it is along I-35, which runs from Minnesota down through Texas. And all along the way, you're liable to encounter a roost tree where they all collect at night to sleep but they like to follow that flyway. Now, there are other flyways, but that seems to be the most populated. So where are these butterflies coming from? And you mentioned Mexico. So where actually in Mexico will they end up? Uh, down in uh, Demiashan, uh, central Mexico. And they'll spend the entire winter there. And uh, they have enough stored fat in their bodies. They actually don't have to feed while they're in Mexico. And they'll spend, they'll stay there until next March. And next March, they start their annual migration back northward. Now, the butterflies that are going to Mexico start all the way in Canada and throughout the East Coast and Midwest, and they'll just funnel down. Now, normally it takes them six to eight weeks to make the 3,000 mile trip, but weather has a lot of factors to play in that migration. So yeah, let's elaborate. I mean, that was my next question, actually. What cues from the weather make these butterflies even begin their journey? Well, it's actually the angle of the sun to the horizon. And once it no longer gets above 56 degrees, that triggers my their migration mode. Now, along, along the migration route, weather plays a big factor. Now, one would be a uh, rain that we're experiencing now and most of the country, and butterflies could get wet. And uh, if it's raining hard, naturally, they're gonna hide under vegetation until it stops raining. But if they get too wet, their wings get too heavy and they can't flap them. And they're gonna burn up a lot of that stored flat. fat. So they're going to just uh, find a nice place to perch and dry off in the sun. Now, another factor is wind. And what will happen is uh, wind causes drag on the butterflies. And if it's too windy, they're going to burn up too many, too many of those lipids to store fat. And if they burn up too much, they won't have enough to survive while they're overwintering Mexico. Then we have a, a factor with heat. Butterflies cannot, generally don't fly if it's below 60 degrees. Now, if it's 55 and very sunny, they could still make it through. And another factor is if it gets above 95, they get very slow and they'll take a rest. So along the way, if it dips below 60, they're gonna have a little bit of problem. And if it's above 95, they'll have a problem. Great information. Our thanks to butterfly expert, Rick Bakula, and that beautiful story of the migration of the monarch. Very informative.